what kind of leash do you have with Lisa Bluter about a behind the back pass? Like um, you kind of got to make it, right? I, yeah, I, I have to make it. I try to tell her if I complete one, then it like gives me a bonus. So like I get two now. So I, if I miss one, I still have one left and it like keeps adding up, but she doesn't really roll with that. But <laughs> if I do it in a game, I better complete it. <laughs> That was Iowa star basketball player, Caitlin Clark, and this is on the bench with Mike Hall. That's me. Caitlin Clark is an absolute sensation in Iowa City. Last year, she was a freshman Hawkeye and exploded on the national scene right away. She led the country in scoring and was second in the US in assists as a freshman. She had a triple double in one game, was the national co-freshman of the year, first team All-American, she single-handedly changed the perception of what Iowa basketball can be. Lisa Bluter first started watching her play ball in seventh grade as Caitlin was a phenom in the state hailing from Des Moines. This year, yeah, she's already thrown down another triple-double and has already scored more than 40 points in one game. Just trying to lead her team to their first Big Ten title since 2008. I started off with Caitlin by asking her, what's the most points she's ever scored in any game? I scored 60 in high school one game, my junior year, an away oh. game. We traveled two hours away, hopped off the bus, dropped 60, drove two hours home. It was pretty crazy. <laughs> Those fans must have hated you. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, they were like, actually, so Megan Meyer, who used to be on our team, and then she transferred after this last year, I was playing her. And actually, it was a really close game. I wasn't like, we weren't like trying to run up the score. It wasn't anything like that. Like, I think the final score was 90 to 80. And I had 60. One of my teammates had 20. So the rest of our team scored 10. I think Megan had like 30. Another person on their team had 30. Like, zero defense being played. It was crazy. But probably one of the most entertaining games somebody could have ever attended. Wow. Yeah. What was it like? I mean, what does it feel like to score 60 points in a game? <laughs> I think I had 25 in the first quarter. So I was like, oh, geez, here we go. It's going to be one of those <laughs> nights. And what's crazy, I only took 28 shots in that game. And like in high school, I would take about over 30 usually a game just because my team didn't have a ton. It was mostly me. So I was usually taking over 30 shots. So I only took 28. I think I was like, I don't even know, like 19 for 28. Like I made, I think I have the state record for like 14 or 15 threes in a game. It was insane. Oh my yeah. gosh. That's yeah. great. Do you, do you honestly think you were just lights out or was there defense enough that you were sort of getting these opportunities you don't normally no, get? I was just, I was just lights out. Like they ended up putting like two people on me, but like it was off the dribble, like catch and shoot. It was pretty wild, honestly. Do you remember like, Cause it's, I, was there like a scoreboard you could check and be like, Oh, I'm at 30. Oh, I'm at yeah. 40. And I would get to 40, like pretty consistently by my junior and senior year in high school, just because like, that's what my team needed. And I was either really high thirties or low forties, but I never scored in the fifties in my high school career, but I did get to the sixties, which was yeah. unheard of, but yeah. pretty awesome. bypass 50 who needs yeah. half a hundred. We don't need 50. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> who in your life was the toughest for you to score against? Like who guarded you the best, whether it was in the big 10 or even in high school? Ooh, that's a good question. In high school, it was only hard because it was like two people, but like in the big 10, I, I more just see one. Sometimes I see two, but it's more just one. I think uh, Cardano Hillary from Indiana is pretty good. She's pretty feisty, pesty girl. Um, I don't know. I think Veronica Burton's obviously super solid, but it's not really a total man-to-man -man defense that they play. So she's not really guarding me the whole time. Um, I think Rutgers was pretty solid last year too, just because they would press the entire time. So we would kind of struggle with that. Um, but yeah, I think definitely Cardano, Hillary, and then Burton, I would say the two toughest ones I see in the big 10. What, what is it they do? Is it just relentless energy? Are they uptight yeah, on you? Definitely relentless energy more than anything. Like it's always constant, like in your grill, they're never going to leave you for a second. Um, yeah, definitely feisty can move their feet. A lot. Both of them usually would pick me up full court, especially Cardania Hillary. I know she would pick me up full court, which I don't honestly don't mind. It gives me more room to work with the ball in my hands, but um, she's just very relentless, both of them, honestly. And 
just wouldn't give up no matter what. So, Well, no matter what they do to you, you're already building this amazing career at Iowa. How did you know for certain you wanted to play at Iowa? Yeah, honestly, it was pretty hard um, just because I did have so many options and I built a lot of relationships with a lot of coaches. And like, that's kind of the hardest thing is like saying no to coaches. But at the end of the day, like I knew I wanted to be close to home. Um, I mean, I live like two hours from my from my home, my family home. Um, so that was kind of a big one for me. And then obviously Coach Bluter has done tremendous things with with great players that she gets, obviously Megan and then Kathleen. Uh, really developed them in, into draft picks. So I really like that. But at the same time, it was kind of like they haven't been to the final four. Um, they got to the lead eight. So they were like on the brink. So I, I kind of wanted to be do something a little different and, and take not really a blue blood, but go somewhere that's proven, but hasn't been to the final four. And I thought, but the personnel they had, obviously Monica um, and just all the pieces that we had, I thought it, we had a pretty good chance. So um, obviously we have some work to do still, but I think yeah. we have a lot of great pieces. No, I totally, totally get that. Like the idea of if you go to a really good school with a really good program like Iowa, you can leave a legacy that will last forever. If you go to UConn, you're going to be one of a wave of people that came after a wave of people that came after a wave of people. Like that yeah. makes total sense to me. Yeah, and I, I get why people go to UConn. I mean, they are draft picks. Are, they have so many draft picks every single year. I mean, Gino is legendary one of the best all time so I mean there's definitely reasons to go to blue bloods but I guess for me I just I, and I think in general it's becoming more popular not to go to those blue bloods I think we're seeing more and more teams that are different in the final four different in the lead eight like they're just getting more talent I think for Oregon Oregon for an example like Sabrina did something different that's kind of like what I liked um she went somewhere that really in the past hadn't been amazing um, obviously they had Ruthie and really great pieces around them. So I kind of compare us kind of that to that. Um, it wasn't just Sabrina, but they had a lot of other good pieces there. Um, and I was kind of attracted to that idea. And I thought here at Iowa, we had, a, we had a great chance to do something very similar to that. Yeah. Do you remember how young you were when you got your first official college recruitment? Honestly, probably seventh grade. I probably got my oh. first letter, maybe sixth grade. But my parents were super good about like not letting me really see any of that. I'm like, I'm in middle school. I don't need to worry about that. Like, I need to worry about going to PE class the next right. day. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, yeah, it was started super young. And I think that's like the best thing my parents did is just, like keep me away from that. Just like, so I love the game still and don't get overwhelmed. Just be a normal kid. And the reason you play is because you love it. You want to have fun. I mean, you don't play to, I mean, obviously your goal is to go play in college, but that's not really the main reason you play. Like right. I started playing young, young and I've always loved it. And that's really the main reason I play. So when were you allowed to like get serious about it? Like sophomore year of high school, junior yeah. year? Like end of my freshman year and then getting sophomore year is kind of when I like started taking some unofficial visits, started talking to coaches more, uh, just like feeling out what I like, what I didn't like on certain visits and like, kind of making a list and, and narrowing it down from that but I didn't decide until like beginning of my senior year so I still waited a pretty long pretty long time yeah um you I, I like to think of that that road you never took like I had like four schools and the one I went to was the one I wanted most but there were like three that like I would have been happy with and it's funny yeah. Iowa was one of those programs that I was I was very close well I'm very close but I considered them they were in like that final group what was in your final group yeah that my like last three were Iowa, Iowa State and Notre Dame. So at that point I knew I wanted to be close to home. So that kind of ruled out some other options like Oregon, Oregon State, Texas, Florida, Duke, um, kind of ruled all those out for me. And um, I, I mean, I just knew I wanted to be close to my family. And now that I'm here, like I'm able to go home on weekends we have off. And like, I don't know if I would survive at other places just because I am so close with my family. My brother plays football at Iowa State. So I've been lucky enough to get back for three of his football games and uh, be able to support him. And like, I don't know, I, I went back for one of my little brother's track meets last year and like being able to do that. It, it, that's what I love. So it's nice. You know, the last time I had a chat with coach Bluter, I asked her when she remembers first seeing you in person. And she said, she was like, it might've been seventh or eighth grade. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you met her? First time I met her was freshman year of high school. I came to Iowa for my first visit. And that's when I got offered. I remember sitting in her office and then it was a football weekend and we played Michigan. <laughs> and I think Michigan was ranked pretty high at the time. 
and we made a field goal to win it and we stormed the field. So, I mean, like, how could I forget that? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we can't, it was me my brother and my dad and we came, I, I can't remember what mission was ranked. I want to say top 10 at the time, but yeah. it must've been like 2017 or yeah, 2017. We went on a last second field goal. I think Keith Duncan and oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we stormed the field. I didn't storm the field, but I stood there and watched it. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> um, so when you were a kid, did you watch the Hawkeyes growing up at all? Honestly, it's kind of funny because my family wasn't like diehard Hawkeye or diehard Cyclone. Uh, so it's kind of funny that now my brother's at Iowa State and I'm here, um, which is kind of like how it was when we were growing up. But we definitely watched the Hawkeyes. Honestly, I was we were big Drake Bulldog fans just because like us in the heart of Des Moines and they had pretty good basketball. So my dad would take me to their games all the time, um, men's or women's. Like I love to go. I think one year I had like a Drake Bulldog basketball cake and then I went to the basketball game. So like I was always around the game. Like I loved it. Um, but yeah, I, we weren't really diehard either. So it's kind of funny how it worked out. But now my parents are diehard Cyclone and diehard Hawkeye, I guess. Isn't, isn't that funny? Like I went to a school that same thing that I had no real passion for before I got there. And then it was like three weeks in and I was like, oh yeah, this is my blood. This yeah. is who I am. I'm oh, so yeah. passionate already. Isn't that funny how quickly that happens? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like I'll be a Hawk fan forever. I mean, I'll come back to the games when I'm done. I'll go to the football games. Like absolutely. Yeah. It's just in your blood automatically now. Do you try to go to every football game that's a home one? Yeah, I try to go to most. We have practice usually right before, but not even football. Like, I've been to field hockey. Obviously, last year was kind of difficult just because yeah. a lot of things were shut down. But um, I'm going to try to get to as much as I can of other sports. I'm pretty close with our really good tennis player. Um, she was a freshman. She was my age. She's super good. She won Big Ten Player of the Year and Big Ten Freshman of the Year. So um, I'll definitely be at some women's, women's tennis matches. But yeah, I mean, wrestling, we're amazing at wrestling, yeah. men's basketball, I went to a lot of last year just because it was easy to get into those. Um, but yeah, Hawkeye sports are doing super well right now. And it's yeah. fun, to, fun to watch. Let me ask you a little more about when you were younger. You played up a lot mm -hmm. because of your early skill set. Do you remember the first time you played up? Oh, man. Um, I think, so I played with the boys when I was really young. I played boys soccer and boys basketball. And it's funny because my dad still coached our team, even though I was with the boys, but like I actually won league MVP and it was all boys league in the soccer <laughs> for basketball, <laughs> yeah, like a little sport league. And I actually won it. And people were mad that I won MVP. And they're like, come on, like what? Yeah. And, and it wasn't because like, I'm just a girl in the league. Like I was good. And uh, so that's pretty funny, but yeah, I grew up playing with the boys. I think for the most part, I played my, my age group. But then when I got to the girls, I switched over in sixth grade. And um, when I started playing attack, I usually was playing up like every weekend. And then the most I played up, I was in eighth grade and I played up on our oldest team. So I was playing with girls that were going to be seniors. And I, oh. I didn't play a ton, but I still played some. And I mean, I was a scrawny little kid out there. Like I didn't, I didn't care. But like all these college coaches are like sitting on the sidelines, like, I'm just going out there, like, having fun, don't care. I'm, like, three years younger than all of them, getting <laughs> bullied around. But, no, like, honestly, I give a lot of credit to that just because I've always played against girls that are bigger, stronger, faster. So I think that kind of helped me going into high school and then obviously coming here. I've seen a lot of the same stuff before. Yeah. No, I totally get I completely buy the you rise to your level that surrounds you. Yeah. You know, you, you will get better if you're surrounded by better um during last year's ncaa tournament kevin durant tweeted at you and you and i briefly talked about this months ago but he basically said you belong in the league right now if that was me i screen grab that and then i frame it and i blow it up and i put it on a wall and i look at it every day did you do that <laughs> i did screenshot it but i didn't put it on the wall but no <laughs> i i think kd is like a huge supporter of women's sports and he still dms me sometimes about a bunch of different stuff which is come cool. on i know i know it's crazy but actually when my team won nike nationals i must have been going and i was going into my junior year he was at the game he came to the game it was in chicago um he like gave all the eybl team uh, katie shoes that year and then he pulled up to the championship championship game which was crazy so he was sitting courtside 
And at the time I was getting recruited by Texas. So like the Texas coach like went over there and was like, yeah, you got to like her. Or, like ah. Katie went to Texas. So, and after the game, he like gave me the trophy and I like just took it out of his hand, like started celebrating and thinking back on that. Now I'm like, what was I doing? Like, why didn't I ask for a picture? Like, <laughs> But he ended up like following me after that. And he's like, honestly been a big supporter, even since I've been in high school, which has been super cool. So um, yeah, I think he's just a, a huge advocate for women's sports and um, so, it's cool when those NBA guys really appreciate the women's game. So what do you and he DM about? Oh, I for he DM'd me the other day. He was like, oh, I'm going to send you some jerseys and like some stuff of mine. Like, where should I send it to? I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. That is but so like, cool. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He's definitely one of my favorite players all time. I think he's the best player in the league right now. I mean, the way yeah. he scores the ball, I mean, it, it's nice being seven foot and being a guard. That would make it pretty easy. <laughs> favorite celebrity you've met in person so far? Ooh. Hmm, That's tough. I think, honestly, Maya Moore, because when I was growing up, like, I was the biggest Maya Moore fan ever. Um, so I went to the Minnesota Lynx game, and my dad had, like, taking me up like we didn't really have tickets so he like he was gonna get tickets obviously but he like called the ticket office and he was like I'm just gonna bring my daughter like what seats should I get and her, this guy was like yeah you can come to the shoot around like like really like he just like loved us and like took care of us so we went to the shoot around I met like Lindsay Whalen Simone Augustus like it was just great luck honestly Rebecca Brunson was on the team at the time so we had like sitting like courtside at this point and then after the game like Maya Moore spoke and they were playing the Seattle Storm like and they had all their good players at the time. So, I mean, it was like the best of the best. And after the game, like Maya Moore spoke. And I remember afterwards, I like, just ran up to him. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like I was like starstruck. And I think I got a picture with her, but honestly her, just because at the time I was like the biggest Maya Moore fan ever. Yeah. Um, and I still am a huge fan of hers. Obviously she's still not in the game, but what she does is pretty awesome. And other than that, like KD was awesome, but I regret not asking for a picture. Um, but yeah, honestly, you, I you might get a chance for a picture with him down the line. I, know, I, I don't, I don't think you blew your only opportunity <laughs> okay, to meet him. Good. I'm glad. What gets you the most angry during a game? Mm. Missing shots. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. It's not something that like, um, uh, a way someone guards you or if, uh nothing it's just on you if you miss shots that's yeah. what's gonna tick you off to be honest like I don't really get too worried like everybody's like how do you think you're gonna be guarded this year I'm like well, what they did last year I don't know how much <laughs> different can they be like you yeah. know like my the, our the four other starters on our team are so skilled like it's not like they can run two people at me or else we're, I mean we score 90 points a game <laughs> like it's not like I'm scoring 90 points a game so right um this is in high school when you'd yeah, score 60 yeah. of the 90. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't think it's going to be really much different um, than what I've what I've seen in the past, to be honest with you. And I <laughs> I mean, I shoot the ball pretty well off the dribble and, like, creating my own shot. So it doesn't really worry me too much. What's your favorite feeling during a game? Honestly, like, buzzer beater shot at the end of quarter or something, that's, that's pretty good, but making a super good pass to like Monica and she gets an and one. Like, I love that. Like the behind the back pass in the NCAA tournament. That was like, that was awesome too. So I, I really love the assist if it's cool. Same with the shot. Um, but I think this year, like with fans, that'll change. Like, I think like making a three or something cool happens and like just hearing their roar is going to be amazing. What, what kind of leash do you have with Lisa Bluter about a behind the back pass? Like um, you kind of got to make it right. I, yeah. I, I have to make it. I try to tell her if I complete one, then it like gives me a bonus. So like I get two now. So I, if I miss one, I still have one left and it like keeps adding up, but she doesn't really roll with that. But uh, <laughs> if I do it in a game, I better complete it. <laughs> yeah. How deep a three is too deep for you to make? Um, Probably just half court. Like, honestly, in practice, I've been pulling up, like, a couple steps past half court if we need it. Um, yeah. How did she I, feel I mean, about those are that? Shots, like, I work on. It's not like I'm just chucking them up in a game. Like, right. Well, that's what I work on. But I don't know. Maybe maybe my threes won't look as long this year because they moved the line back. So, Or I'll just sure. keep scooting back, I guess. <laughs> well, what would make Lisa more nervous, a behind-the-back pass or a half-court three? 
oh man <laughs> uh, she might stay behind the back pass honestly yeah i, I think, think that might be too. Me, like a step in from half court three what is it just Steph Curry or is there something more? There's something about men's and women's basketball in the last five or six years where the, the three pointers are getting so much deeper than they were even 10 years ago. It's like, I don't know what is happening in the game, but people, and it's not just taking them. You guys are making these shots from five, 10, 15 feet behind the line. Yeah, I think just honestly, I think Steph Curry's done a ton for the game and just people see him shoot and they just want to mimic it. I think even Clay um, on the same team, like they're pretty unstoppable. They're they're incredible to watch. Um, but yeah, I think once you like have like part of your range down, like you just keep taking steps back and steps back. And I think that's kind of what it was for me. Like those are shots I practice. Like I think they're fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, and now everybody's really starting to do it. More people are trying to add that to their game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love it. If I gave you anyone, Steph, Clay, Maya, Durant, mm -hmm. who would you most want to play horse against? Steph. Yeah. Yeah. He's the best shooter of all time. So I'm going to go him. Could you, could you get a letter on him? I don't think so. He, he, <laughs> he, like, count, he only counts swishes in his workouts now. I'm like, that's insane. Uh, oh. He doesn't count makes, only swishes. He's, uh, he's incredible. When the pandemic started, the whole country for two months was glued to the last dance. Were you one of those people? Oh, yeah. My whole family was in the basement, like, waiting for it to come on. Oh, they released that at the perfect time. That was amazing. I great show I, I even go back and watch some of the episodes still even though i've already I, seen it i have definitely already gone back and watched yeah. from beginning to end once for sure yeah. but it was different for me because uh like i'm not that old unless i'm compared to you then i'm very old but like jordan and those bulls that was when i was becoming a teenager like that was growing up for you that was way in the past like right. was it almost educational for you more than it was entertaining for the rest of us yeah, I mean, it was definitely educational in a way. And like, even my parents were like, yeah, like, this is what people would do with their nights. They'd go home and watch MJ and the Bulls play. Like, it was like a thing. Like, you would sit around your TV and watch MJ play. But yeah. I think like just the coolest thing about it, like, he was such a competitor. And like, that's so easy to relate to. Like, he competed every single day in practice. And like, some of the stories they told, I'm like, dang, like that guy, no wonder he's the GOAT because yeah. some of the stuff he did is pretty wild. Uh, if not for basketball, what would be your best sport? Definitely soccer. I played that until sophomore year and then I gave it up. But like, I honestly could have probably gone on and played at a power five. Um, like I was, I started as a freshman on our varsity team, but I, I want to say golf just because I really like golf. Um, yeah. I'm not a very good golfer. I do go sometimes in the summer. I, I went a decent amount this summer. Um, but I just like love that lifestyle and like the LPGA is pretty well supported and um, I like watching the PGA tours I actually went to the Solheim Cup which is the girls version of the Ryder Cup yeah it was in Des Moines and it was like one of the most fun experiences of my life I loved it because oh, it's different cool. than like regular golf like everybody's cheering like you're super patriotic about the USA like it's awesome so soccer or golf not yeah. inspired by the last dance throwing quarters at a wall i mean okay that's good <laughs> that's good because then there's this guy with the yeah. curly hair you'd have to worry about right, right yeah the meme what do you hopefully you got you know th three full more years at iowa and then a long playing career in the M and the WNBA, but or the nba i'm not going to limit you hey, maybe. Uh, when your playing career is done whenever that is what do you want to do oh i think like my dream would be like I used to want to be a coach, but like, I don't know so much more now, but I think like working in the front office of like a sports organization or like a pro team would be super cool. Um, I definitely want to do something with sports just yeah. because like, I love it. I've been around it my whole life. Like my family, like breathes sports, like just like what we do. It's part of our blood. So definitely with something yeah. with sports. Okay. Well, you've been awesome for giving me your time. Uh, before you go, we're going to do our final segment called Before You Go. Four questions unrelated okay. to anything. I like that. Number one, what is the terrible TV show that you just love watching? Oh. 
terrible TV show. Uh, have you seen You on Netflix? I uh, yeah, I saw the first season. It's like so unrealistic. Like I don't <laughs> think anybody would ever be able to get away with anything that happens on that show. But I I've already binged the new season that came out in like two days. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what wasn't that the one where there was like that glass like yeah, prison have, in the basement? Yeah. Yeah, they have the glass like box in the basement. They keep people in there and nobody notices they're gone. I'm like, that would never happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. That 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 counts as terrible, yeah. but but worth uh, binging. Number two, what jobs have you had in your life? Basketball. You never <laughs> mowed well, lawns or babysat or. I, I babysat, yeah. I would like the old Dowling basketball coach would ask me to watch these like two boys and little girl um I did do that I'm trying to think what else um honestly like nothing much really yeah I never had time like I was always busy doing stuff yeah never a lifeguard you didn't work at an ice I, cream shop or no I wish like I've worked a lot of basketball camps I guess you consider that yeah um were you a good babysitter <sighs> probably not <laughs> is anyone no, really? really good they always just wanted to play sports with me which was fine so yeah. I was probably good in that regard I was so bad and I was so lazy as a babysitter that like one time uh this lady had me babysit and uh and they had old cloth diapers which like were a little complicated and mm -hmm. I was like I want nothing to do with I, this I had to do that thank god oh man and then she came home and she was like oh how was the baby and I was like baby was great and she was like do you change the diaper and I was like uh-huh and she goes, okay, well, let me just check on him before we go. And she was like, oh, you did this, you know, double Windsor knot. That's what my husband does. I'm surprised. That's and weird. I was like, yep, uh, I gotta go. Not a good babysitter. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, number three, what pets have you had in your life? I've only had one dog, Golden Retriever. Still have her. She's like five now. So she's awesome. She's Usually female golden retrievers are only like 65 pounds. Ours is 115. She's oh! Not, yeah, she's not like overweight or anything too. She's just like, we think she has like giantism or something. <laughs> like she's just really big, but she's awesome. She's like the sweetest dog ever. How can she be twice what she should be, but not be I, overweight? I know she's crazy, but it's, it's amazing. Holy cow. Wow. Yeah, she's the sweetest. Okay. Uh, number four, if something happens in your life that is really big, good or bad, who's your first call? Definitely my parents, hands down. Um, me and my older brother are pretty close. Um, my younger brother is kind of just in that teenage boy stage right now. Um, doesn't like to respond to my texts too much, um, <laughs> but definitely my older brother. Um, I'm pretty close with my cousins too. Um, I think my coaches, I'm pretty I mean, we share all our good and bad memes together because I see them every day. I see them more than my family now, and they're basically my family. So um, definitely those people. Well, hopefully you have a lot of good reasons to call them throughout the rest of this year. Caitlin, you are a joy to talk to, uh, a joy to watch. This was super fun to get to catch up with you. Yes, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. That was Caitlin Clark. You can watch her wizardry all season long on the Big Ten Network. It's always worth watching when she's on the court. My thanks to her for joining me and to you for listening. From the Big Ten Network in Chicago, I'm Mike Hall. We'll see you next time.